Gold Rots the Goal, Chapter 17. We're back on the plant floor. Actually, the chapter opens at home. Again, we've uh, now established that Rogo is uh, playing Mr. Mom as his wife has uh, kind of taken a break from the relationship. So we start the day with the two kids, uh, Davey and Sharon, fighting over making pancakes and breakfast at the house before Rogo goes into the office. Um, he's a scurrying single father, getting the kids out the door to school. The bulk of this chapter is spent at the plant where he works through four big concepts with his team. The first is goals. The team's goal is to ship intermediate parts to a sister plant run by Hilton Smythe. Hilton is, I guess, the closest thing we have to maybe a bad guy in this. He's been a bad guy in a couple of the earlier chapters. Every activity that doesn't achieve the goal here, and again, the goal is getting these intermediate parts out, is a waste of time. So the team should only be pursuing activity that achieves this goal. There's a second major concept here, and that's constraint. So the parts must pass through the NCX-10 robot. This is the robot we've talked about in all the other chapters, which can only handle 25 parts per batch. It doesn't handle, so if we, it can't handle 26, right? There's not an extra slot. And if you run 24, then you've got a slot open. So again, remember that number 25, because it comes back to really bite the team at the end of the chapter. We've covered this topic consistently now since chapter 11, and that's dependent events. So that what we learn is the robots uh, we, we'd seen earlier in the book uh, are not at the start of the production process. They're really mid-plant mid as far as their production flow. And we learn that the pre-robot step is human operator driven. So parts arrive to the NCX-10 in an irregular fashion. The NCX-10 depends on this upstream, upstream processing. Without that upstream processing, uh, to produce feedstock, the NCX-10's production step doesn't do anything. So if that step is uneven, then so too will be the loading of the NCX-10. The last point, again, the topic of the, the, this kind of pair of topics, dependent events, was number the third concept. The fourth is statistical fluctuations. The NCX-10 has a really tight performance window with little, performance, with little fluctuations, but the upstream processes are much, much more variable. So Rogo's team has a clear goal, and they celebrate quite a bit at the end of the book, almost achieving it before realizing that almost doesn't really matter, right? Their customer, again, an internal customer, Hilton Smythe's plant, is going to really beat them up no matter if, if they get close to the goal because they didn't hit the goal, and that goal was 25 units, which was the constraint, right? They're not successful in achieving their goal unless they hit that 25 number constraint and they never really mapped the dependent event. So the NCX-10 is really the last in a series of production steps. So here we've got all the dependent events in statistical fluctuations happening upstream of the NCX-10. So they get close to hitting that 25 number, but not all the way there. So the lessons, kind of like what we learned two chapters ago with Herbie, is that you've got to really look at the constraint and really look at how do you unlock the constraint. Um, my favorite quote in this chapter is on page 128. It's what Alex says to his team. He says, and if we know that Jonah is correct, right? The mentor who had shown up a couple chapters ago uh, when they, he did the surprise breakfast morning meeting in New York. If we know that Jonah is correct, we'd be pretty stupid to continue running the plant the same way as before, right? So I'm going to let you see for yourselves what's happening. So again, Go, Rogo is doing with his team, teaching by the Socratic method, the same way that Goldrat is teaching us, the reader. It's one of the things I really like about the goal is all of the internal consistency. Go find a copy of the goal on your own, read it, you'll love it. It makes your life better. It makes your plant functions better. It makes all these kind of uh, personal things that Goldrat touches on better and you will enjoy it.